uh, <clears throat> kind of dating myself. How you doing out there? You know, I wanted to talk about sharing what I go through, trying to dial in an amplifier to get a good sound for a nice jazz box. So <clears throat> a lot of people who uh, have gotten quilters have asked me, what are my settings and what do I do to dial in the sound? So I thought we'd explore some of the thought processes going through how to get a good sound. Number one is, what is a good sound? And I think Les Paul said it. You got a, you got a sound in your head and you turn the knobs. So, you know, you have to kind of know what you are looking for to know if you ever find it. All right, that's number one. So we got to establish kind of what is a good sound, especially on a jazz guitar. Now this amp can do many, many different things, but we're only going to talk about a jazz sound. Now the second thing is, is most of the time when you're gigging or whatever, you've got your amplifier on the floor and you're above it and you are not getting a true reading out of that amplifier. You're, re you're hearing it off the top, plus it is on the floor and it's producing a bigger bass sound on the floor. Now, if you want your amp on the floor, get your head down there to really hear what is happening because you're not gonna hear it three or four feet above the amplifier. Now, in this case, the speaker, you know, is aimed at the guitar. So I've got my uh, condenser mic in front of it, uh, a large condenser mic. And let's go through and talk about what we're going to um, trying to get a good sound. First off, rule number one, if you want a good clean sound, you've got to have the master volume all the way up. And then you control your volume with the gain input. If we turn the, ma the uh, master volume down and crank this up, it, you're gonna start overloading the amp. And that could be a good thing, but if we're playing jazz, not so good. Now let's start with just the reverb. Now, look at, I like a little reverb. A lot of guys play with without reverb, and that's the traditional jazz sound. I don't like it. I like to have a little trail at the end. Now that little trail is designated by the dwell. The dwell, if I turn it down, I'll, I'm going to re-emphasize. The dwell is short. Now the, the tail of it is short. Turn it up there, it's long. So I like it right around here. And I like the reverb maybe around here. So it's not, it's not too uh, present. It's just enough to make me happy. Second, the tone here. The higher up you go, the more high end you get through the reverb circuitry. I like to tone it down a little bit because I don't, I don't need any boost. I just want that right there. So now, the next thing on this is, is if we look at the tremolo, the tremolo is, is, it's a pretty good tremolo, it's okay. The higher up you put it, the uh, more depth it has. One thing that guys do, and it's happened to me, I'll have, I won't turn this tremolo button all the way down, so it's, it'll be like stuck right there, and that'll be there, and it'll have this slow tremolo. And I'm thinking, what the heck is going on? You know, I don't even notice it. But it, it, you do, you do kind of notice it when you uh, are playing. So right now we're going to turn that off. If I do use tremolo, I turn it all the way up and have it about right there. Now, before we move into the EQ section and the other features, we, we got to ask ourselves on like amplifying this guitar, what is the goal? You know, this guitar is a very rich, fat sounding guitar. Um, and this 
guitar sounds really fantastic. Plugged directly in to a beautiful board at a high-end studio. You get that, you hear all of the nuances of the guitar. A lot of smooth jazz guys, man, they'll do that. They'll take a, a nice L5 and they'll plug it in direct to the board and they get this fat sound. You know, maybe through a preamp they'll have it too. All right, so the arch top guitars are different than a solid body guitar. Solid body guitar, the amplifier is doing most of the work, right? On this, we want to have a balance between guitar and amp. Um, so the sound shaping on a solid body guitar, you know, you've got to have a good sound, uh, good pickups and stuff on a guitar, nice wood. But the amp is generating your tone. This, we want, again, a balance between what this is supposed to produce and what that can do to amplify it, okay? All right, let's go close up again. Now this, let's talk about a limiter. A limiter first off is kind of a balancer, right? It takes your louder sounds and compresses them a little, and therefore your softer tones will be as equal as your louder sounds. The more I turn this up, the more limiting it has. And you can kind of hear it a little bit. I don't like too much limiting, but I like a little bit on there. And it evens out the, the guitar. I know what I should have said from the beginning is to when you watch this video, put on a nice set of headsets. Okay, so you can hear the nuances. You're not going to hear them through your little speaker on your phone or something. You got to have a nice set of headsets. Let's move on. Okay, so the tremolo is going to balance out our sound, right? Now, let's move to uh, just treble, mids, and bass because you can do a lot with that. Now, you know, the tendency is to get a big, fat, lush sound. And when I get a big, fat, lush sound, the low notes are too heavy, okay? And if you would ever hear that in a band, you would say, gosh, when the guy's playing, the low notes get washed out. That is why you want to have a more of a balanced sound on the guitar because these low notes can get washed out in the band. Plus, if you have your amplifier in the, on the floor, now there's th this low bass sound is going to be doubled. Remember, you're not in a rock band, okay? So you're not going to be playing, uh, you don't want to be playing power chords and you don't need this big fat bass sound. So, Let's take it and roll it off, straight up in the middle. Supposedly no effect. Now when I do that, if you notice, these notes are affected as well. Let me show you. Right? These notes, do you hear it? They're affected as well. So, there's a, I kind of like the sound of here, but it doesn't work for the low end. Now, how much treble do I want? Do I want... A little too much, huh? The treble notes are, are not, are too much, too much treble. I gotta back that off. I like to put it just flat. Or even, I'll roll it off a of hair. Now, what about this high cut? Now, the more up there, and you can hear it if I boost the treble, the less goes through. So, I like to put it about there. And the deal is, you know, you want your high notes to come through with the soft, pretty sound, 
and not a piercing sound. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to cut these so much that I don't hear this dance that goes on. Now, I probably should have talked about this in the, in the beginning, and that is this one knob over here. This guy, the brown, tweed, surf, lead, smooth, full cue. I personally use the brown setting. The tweed I will use sometimes with a band. It, it really thins the guitar out, but you know what? It makes it so you can turn it up and project through the band. And it's got that old sound. Now, if I want to, I could raise the bass a hair on the tweed. But once again, now I'm going for a sound in my head that I want now the tweed setting to do. So I might as well go back to the brown setting. Now the surf setting worked great for a telly. And you hear it? You hear what the difference is? Let the lead sound. A nice sound, but I don't think it's jazz appropriate. The smooth sound. That's pretty nice. The full cue, which is basically just a straight out amplifier. That's a nice sound. But for me, I like the brown sound and I like the way that brown setting I, I just like it. I'm going to cut that a hair. Funny, I, I was talking to Jay Graydon once about Ted Green's playing, and he was saying, you know, Ted always was turning around and adjusting his amp all the time. He said, I never could hear the difference. But you know what? You hear the difference. Ted here obviously heard the difference, or he wouldn't have been doing it. <clears throat> Which brings me to another quick little story. I was doing a seminar once, and uh, at the end of the seminar, uh, it was... I was playing a tune and Phil Kakey came in. And uh, I had this Hofner very thin and he was saying, oh, I like the sound of that guitar, man. That sounds good. Can I try it? And I said, yeah. So he picked it up and started playing. And he said, wow, it sure sounds different in your hands than it does out there. <laughs> so that's another thing. That's why I want you to get your head down into what you're hearing. Because <clears throat> it, again, here you're kind of hearing a little of, the, of this as well as that and it's not exactly what the audience is hearing so you get my drift all right let's go back and talk about the mid channel all right so my mid channel now what are the mid frequencies if I take my G string do you hear it roll it off do you hear it boost it up there's that mid frequency. You take the mids out, it sure softens it up, doesn't it? They're too soft. Ooh, that's just about right. That's a nice sound. Just a little, little more boost. All right, now, again, the bass channel, we already talked about that. Do we really need all this? No, you don't. It, it puts it way off balance. I kind of like 
it back there. Again, you really got to be careful. You know, if you had a VU meter and you looked at the VU meter, I have one of my recorders here. So I can see when I have that bass up, I can see the VU meter pinning. Okay, and then the treble notes are about here. So you see it, it's off balance. And when you do some recordings, you'll notice that if you have too much bass, again, the low notes pop out or they, they just sound too, too big. Okay, so big is not always better. I always like to, to give that the test, and then I go to my octaves, make sure I get a nice balanced sound. Now, if I took this limiter off, a lot of, a lot of times when you really dig into it, okay, you're going to pin things. That's why you like to have a little bit of limiting. just kind of sets it sets it real straight I think that's about it for for the uh, guitar tone on a Mach 2 on a Mach uh, Pro 200 uh, Micro Pro 200 Mach 2 geez guys get a better name okay also there's a phase button here and this apparently is for when you are playing and you get feedback with an acoustic guitar or, or a, some other guitar. There's B. There's A. This is not a modeling app, right? There's actual circuitry that things are going through. So A or B, I don't know if it matters or not. For what I do. There's that was B, here's A. Now you're saying, hey Rich, what about all this stuff? This all that good stuff here, all this scoop, bright, loud, cream, crush. You know, what are you making, a snow cone? Uh, <clears throat> you know, the, on the other, the first version, I used to take the scoop, and it, you, that basically boosts and, and cuts. used to do that. I used to pump that up a little bit. I don't, I don't on this version. I mean, don't do that. So I just leave it like that, as clean as unbalanced as I can get. And then I've got a beautiful sound. It's not, it's not enhanced too much by the amp, although the amp is doing some work, okay? When you start playing these through Fender guitar, Fender amps and stuff, it'd be like putting it on your surf mode there. And Certain guitars sound wonderful, fantastic through Fender amps. These, uh, the big fat bodies, the jazz boxes, eh, not so much. You know, the reason is they're, they're bass heavy, they, they'll make your guitar feedback, and that, that can be a bear. So feedback, let's talk about that. The, the amp should probably be on this side of you, okay? Not on this side where it can hammer into the base of the guitar and start feeding back. Get your body between the two. Get it down. Point it up towards your head a little bit. And so you get a good uh, reference to the tone and to your volume. Okay? So, and when you're playing, you always uh, want to listen to the drummer. Because his cymbal is fixed. Right? He doesn't have a knob. He can hit it softer and, you know, which you can do that too on a guitar. 
but you want to listen to the cymbals and get your balance with him. And hopefully the bass player will do the same and the piano player. So anyway, there it is. I hope this helps you. I think there's you know, fantastic amps. I've played a lot of amps before this. I had a 66 Deluxe. I had a Vibralux I played for years. I bought a Mustang amp. I thought that would work for me. Um, I've had a, uh, some custom amps made. Uh, I've had a whole slew of them. And uh, since I got my quilter, hey, it's a no-brainer now. It's like, wow, done deal. So I haven't had to worry about it. If I play a real loud gig, I'll, I'll use the 12-inch speaker or, <clears throat> you know, and that just fits on there, or I use two of these, and that's a cool sound. So there you have it. You know, if you need that real bassy end, you're not going to be playing this guitar. You're going to be playing a 335 or a Strat or a Tele, and your feedback is not an issue. If you take this and play real loud, feedback is going to be a problem. So anyway, hope this helps you. I will talk at you later. Bye for now.